If you have a PlayStation portal or are using any of the Remote Play apps on a phone, tablet, PC, Steam Deck or whatever else and you're suffering from laggy gameplay and disconnections at home, then this is the video for you. Device preferences aside, if you're having problems playing at home, it's almost certainly something to do with your network quality or configuration. Streaming games is not like streaming a TV show or a movie. Those things are linear, predictable and they don't change. So they buffer, which smooths out any network ups and downs, producing a smooth stream. Gaming, however, is live and interactive, which means no buffering, at least not in the same way. So your network quality really matters. And just to reiterate, it's your home's internal network quality that matters, not your internet speed. That is pretty much irrelevant for remote play at home, and that's what this is all about, optimising your home network for playing at home. If you want to play away from home or on mobile data, you should check out my other video which covers port forwarding. It's easy to get a bit lost and confused with home networking, so I've tried to organise this video with the easiest quick wins at the start. But even as we get into the slightly more complicated stuff, I'll keep it as simple as I can and will include a few different examples along the way. The first thing you can do to help with your remote play performance is to plug your console directly into your router or router via an ethernet cable. This might be easier said than done depending on where each are located, but if you can, it'll be the single biggest improvement that you can make. If that's not possible for whatever reason, you may be able to use some LAN over power plugs, which use your home's internal electrical wiring to carry the network signal. They can be pretty effective, especially the newer ones, but as with any problem solving task, the fewer links in the chain, the better. So go directly with ethernet into the router if you can. After you make each or any of these changes, you should test before making any more to see if it's made any difference. That way you'll know exactly what worked for you. So boot up the portal or remote play app and try again. And for this first test, be as close to your Wi-Fi router as possible, ignoring any access points for the time being. You also want to do all of this when the house isn't full of people or devices using the network. It wouldn't be a fair test if, at the time, someone was streaming Netflix or a games console was downloading a game. If you're still experiencing poor performance on remote play whilst having your console hardwired in and being right next to your wireless router, then there are likely only a couple of reasons. The first is that your router is a bit pants. Maybe it's getting on a bit, maybe it was a cheap and cheerful thing that your ISP gave to you when you first signed up. If that's the case, it might be worth looking at replacing it with something newer and better. You don't need to go mad and buy the latest and greatest mega Wi-Fi 6E expensive router, although if you had the spare cash, it certainly would be a nice general network upgrade. I've added a few example models that should do the job in the description below. If remote play works great when in close proximity to your router, but starts to fall off as you get further away or move into another room, at least you'll know it's a Wi-Fi signal quality issue. So jump ahead to chapter 9, which covers testing. However, if you already have a decent modern router and things are still bad when right next to it, then it's on to the next step. Does or can your router broadcast on the 5 GHz wireless frequency? If the answer to that is no, you really should be looking at replacing your router with something more modern. Seriously, 5 GHz has been around a long time now and it will help. If the answer is that you're not sure, you can either Google your router make and model number or log into it and find out. More on how to do that in a moment. If you do have 5 GHz available, make sure that your portal or whatever you're using is connected to that rather than 2.4 GHz. The 2.4 GHz frequency is much more likely to be congested as it's used by things such as wireless security cameras, wireless computer peripherals, baby monitors, microwaves, and even Bluetooth devices. Plus, of course, any other wireless networks in your neighborhood. So how do you check these things? Well, this is where things get a little more technical, but do stick with me as it's not as complicated as you might think. 
The next steps all require you to log into your router. And to do that, you'll need to know your router's IP address. You can find that address in a few different ways. If you're using Windows, open up a command prompt by clicking on start and typing CMD, then press enter. Next, type in ipconfig and press enter again. You're looking for a set of numbers or the IP address next to the default gateway. On a Mac, you can click on the little Apple logo in the top left hand corner of your screen, then go to system settings, network, click on your active network, then details. You'll see the router address just there. On an iOS device, go to settings, then Wi-Fi, tap the little I next to your wireless network name, then scroll down until you see the router address. On Android, it's much the same. Go to settings, network and internet or connections, then internet. Then tap on the cogwheel next to your wireless network name and scroll down until you see the gateway address. Alternatively, if your internet service provider gave you a router as part of your internet package, there might be a sticker on the router with the default network details on it, which will include the router's IP address or login URL. Once you have the address, open up your web browser of choice and type that address into the address bar. You'll then be prompted to enter some login details. If you've never changed those, the default login credentials will either be physically on the router itself, like on that little sticker I just mentioned, or there should be some on-screen help on the login page to locate or reset those settings. Failing that, Google is your friend. You'll just need to search for the default login credentials for the make and model of your router. Each router will have its own menu and settings. Some are feature rich and some are locked down and quite restrictive. Once logged in, you might need to dig around to find the settings that you need. Most of the time though, there will be a section of settings that deal with Wi-Fi. So start there. Firstly, have a look to see if you have five gigahertz available and enabled. If you do, great. If it's not enabled, enable it. And if it's not there at all, it's time for that new router. Also look to see if you have something called band steering enabled. This is a generally very useful feature that ensures that any 5 GHz compatible devices do indeed connect to the 5 GHz frequency instead of the 2.41. Enabling it though can be a bit of a double edged sword. On the one hand, it'll help ensure that your remote play device connects to 5 GHz, but at the same time, it could bring other devices onto that frequency too, which may increase congestion. For the time being, and for the sake of problem solving, have it disabled. What you want to avoid is having your remote play device using the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. 2.4 does have a larger broadcast range, but operates at slower speeds, which is why five gigahertz is preferred for something as intensive as streaming games. Wi-Fi 6, if you have it, is even faster, but again takes a hit on range. Incidentally, if you're using a PlayStation Portal, that doesn't support Wi-Fi 6 anyway, so it's not such an issue. Some routers will allow you to set each frequency to broadcast on its own separate wireless network. And if yours does, it's worth setting that up just to test with. That way you can manually ensure that your remote play device is connecting to the faster five gigahertz frequency. Just make sure that you name each network appropriately so that it's obvious which one you're connecting to. Renaming the 5 GHz network will also ensure that only your remote play device is connected to it, which will help rule out congestion caused by other wireless devices on that frequency. You should be able to verify what's connected to what in the router settings. Just look for a connected devices list. Whilst you're in the Wi-Fi settings section of your router, look for any options regarding beamforming. Beamforming focuses your Wi-Fi signal directly towards your device rather than broadcasting in all directions, which improves network performance. If you do have the option, enable it. Some routers like mine have it enabled by default, but don't have the option to change or disable it. If you're using a mesh Wi-Fi network or a network with extenders or access points, you might find it helpful to lock or bind your device to one particular access point. For example, if you only play in your living room and have an access point in there, locking your device to that access point ensures that it doesn't connect to one of the others with a potentially lower quality signal. 
Be mindful though that this is not a good option if you play in different locations around the house as you'll be locked to that single access point. To do this, look for any settings in your router that mentioned binding devices to access points, most likely found in the Wi-Fi settings section or connected devices list. The next thing to check is the performance of your Wi-Fi, especially in relation to other networks in the area. And for this, you're going to need an app or two. Some routers will give you a lot of this information in their settings, but a lot don't. So let's just assume that yours doesn't too. If you're using an Android mobile device, download a free app called Wi-Fi Man, link in the description below. It's a fantastic little tool and it's the one I'll be using as an example. It is also available on iOS, but Apple heavily restricts what apps can and can't do when it comes to Wi-Fi scanning. So you're better off using their airport utility app instead, which can be downloaded for free from the App Store. It's not quite as feature rich, but it will give you a lot of the same information. When you first launch Wi-Fi Man, you'll need to agree to its location permission and Bluetooth scan requests. Once you've done that, you'll see something that looks like this. The very top of the screen contains quite a lot of useful information. Starting at the left, it tells you what frequency you're connected to, in this case, 5 gigahertz. Next is what channel that network is broadcasting on, as well as the channel width. More on what that means in a moment. In this case though, the router is using channel 40 at 80 megahertz. Next over is which standard of wireless you're connected to, in this case, Wi-Fi 5. Next is your Wi-Fi signal strength, which is measured in decibel milliwatts or dBm for short. As a rule of thumb, anything around negative 50 is pretty much excellent and up to negative 67 should be fine too. We're currently connected at negative 42 dBm, which is great. Lastly, on the right is the type of security authentication on the wireless network. All of this information is live and constantly updates, so as you move around the house, the numbers will start to change. You'll notice that as I move further away from my router, the signal strength changes from negative 42 to negative 72, meaning that you can more or less survey the weaker or troublesome signal spots in and around your home. If you tap onto Signal, which is the next tab along at the bottom, you'll see a much more detailed version of the data we were just looking at. You can see how stable the signal is, what the throughput is, which is a measurement of network transfer speed, and what the latency is. This information is incredibly useful in relation to remote play. Tap through each one and make sure that each is a relatively stable horizontal line. If you're seeing lots of peaks and troughs, your remote play experience may be poor. In terms of numbers for each, as I mentioned earlier, you want your signal strength to be around negative 50 dBm. The lower the number, the better, and up to negative 67 should be fine. Wi-Fi Man's throughput test isn't compatible with every network, but thankfully is also the least important of the three. If it does work for you, stability is what you're looking for, as long as it's over, say, 25 megabits per second, which is more than the minimum 15 that Sony recommend. As for latency, which is the most important of the three, the lower the number, the better. And again, look for a nice steady line with nothing that resembles a roller coaster. Once you start heading towards 60 milliseconds and above, you may notice a bit of lag, but certainly when you hit triple digits, it will be noticeable. But wait, there's more because this app will also show you other wireless networks in the local vicinity, which could be causing interference with your network if they're using the same channels. You can toggle between the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies in the app to see which channels are most congested. You can then use that information to manually change the channel that you're using to one that's quieter. A lot of routers will have an auto setting to take care of this, but some routers are better at it than others, so it's worth checking yourself. One thing to note is that if you select a channel between 52 and 144, those are DFS channels. They are reserved for radar and have a built-in detection system for it. If you live near an airport or weather station or anywhere that uses radar, you might not be able to select them. They will also shut down when operational if a radar is detected, 
So whilst they are very quiet channels, use them with caution. As for channel width, think of that as a little bit like the number of lanes on a road that your data can travel along. The wider the road, the more data that can pass. However, with larger width comes increased interference. So a good place to start on 5 gigahertz is 80 megahertz. If you're getting too much interference, drop it down to 40. And if you're living in a very busy area, such as a block of flats, you might even need to take it down to 20. You'll notice a hit on your network speed at 20, but it will be more stable. I previously mentioned that you'd need to download Apple's airport utility to access wireless scanning capabilities on iOS. Well, after you've installed it, you'll notice that that feature is missing, and that's because it's not enabled by default in the app. So to unlock it, you'll need to go to Settings, Airport Utility, and then enable the option for Wi-Fi Scanner. Then when you return to the app, you'll get a little blue option in the top right hand corner to scan for networks. That will then give you a much less pretty version of the list you saw in the Wi-Fi Man app. You can tap on each network that it discovers to find out more information. Remember to keep testing as you change any settings. What works for one person might not work for the next simply because of the number of variables. You're aiming to have your Wi-Fi running on the least congested channel with the widest width and the least amount of interference. So that was quite a lot to take in, so we'll just do a quick summary. Number one, hardwire your console directly into your router. Two, test your Wi-Fi in close proximity to your router. Three, check that you have five gigahertz available and ensure that you use it. Four, create separate wireless networks for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies and rename the 5 gigahertz frequency so that only your remote play device is connected to it. Five, enable beamforming if you have it. Six, if you're using a mesh network, bind your remote play device to one particular access point if you always play from the same spot. Seven, Download a Wi-Fi scanning app to monitor your own Wi-Fi as well as the networks around you. 8. Set your Wi-Fi to a non-congested channel with as wide a channel width as possible. And 9. Test, test and retest. And remember to make those changes and do those tests when the network isn't being used. If your kids are streaming Peppa Pig downstairs and your partner has Netflix on in the kitchen, it's not going to be a fair test. And lastly, if you're watching this video as someone that's considering purchasing a PlayStation Portal, then the best thing that you can do before spending your hard earned money on one is to download the free PlayStation Remote Play app on whatever device you may already have. There's an iOS, Android, Windows and Mac client that you can download for free, as well as various other versions like Chikaki 4 Deck on the Steam Deck. Your remote play experience on the free app will basically be the same as on the portal. So if you're having issues on the free app, better to get them sorted now, if you can, rather than after your portal arrives. I do actually have another video which shows what it's like owning a PlayStation Portal along with where it works great, where it doesn't work so great, things like mobile data and public Wi-Fi. There is a link for that either there or there. I need to learn <laughs> which side that is. I hope this has been helpful or useful. Please let me know in the comments how you get on and if you have any other tips for others that might help. Thank you for watching and a special thanks to anybody that has liked commented or subscribed means a lot.